like mm-hmm. guys in their prime at the perfect time. Like yeah. it is, it is pretty impressive how they've been able to build this thing where all of the stars sort of aligned. Right. Um, but that raises the question: like they are the heavy favorites to repeat next season. Mm-hmm. Do can they do it? Will they do it? Do they need to make any changes this off season? Because this is the one thing that you sort of learned about the NBA in recent years: is just when you think you have it figured out, something happens. Right. You know, somebody demands a trade yeah. or, you know, somebody is there's a, a huge injury. Obviously, that was the case in the Eastern Conference this year. Um, so it's just a, a lot of variables that a lot of times you cannot foresee that just pop up out of nowhere. But like I said, when you look at it right now, from a particularly from a betting standpoint, the Celtics are heavy favorites to win the NBA finals next year. They are uh, plus 300, three to one at FanDuel Sportsbook as of this recording. Um, second shortest odds belong to the Denver Nuggets at plus 750. So where do you stand on this? Do they repeat next year? And if so, like you you willing to put your money where your mouth is? Yeah, I, le- I love the three to one odds because to me, when I look at that, I think, all right, I have three other shots at it. Because like the three to one, you throw that down, and then you could throw some other bets on teams you like, and you feel pretty comfortable that you're at least going to make your money back. Awful way to bet because, <laughs> you know, the Lakers come out of nowhere and win the championship, but then you're out four times the money that you might already be putting in. But uh, I would feel comfortable where if I'm putting money on the Celtics, I would feel comfortable to sprinkle some elsewhere. Uh, I wrote down in the Eastern Conference, I think the Bucks are like year two of Giannis and Dame. They can build, They can add some – I think they need to add some depth on the bench and – What's up with Chris Middleton? Is he ever going to be able to stay on the court? But talent-wise, that's the only team that can compete with you. Yeah, I think Indiana's a great team, but they mopped the floor with them. And there's no upgrades that are coming to Indiana unless it's through the draft. So I like the Celtics at 310, and then you start looking at, like, Minnesota has a really good number. What's that, 10 to 1? Uh, FanDuel, they are plus 850. 850, okay. So And then 750, like you said, for Denver, so... Those three teams right there, you feel confident that you can make a little bit of money on those three. Yeah, I think with the Celtics, if you want them or if you, you feel like they're going to repeat, the play is probably to maybe wait a little bit yeah. in, in the hopes that somebody else sort of beefs up, particularly in the Eastern Conference. Like A team I'm looking at is the Sixers, where they're sitting at 12-1 to 1 right now. They've got some money to spend. Um you know, I, I think the breakout you saw from Tyrese Maxey to go along with Embiid, if he can stay healthy, obviously. But like, that's a team that looks like they're they're nearing sort of inflection point. Like, this is a crucial off season for them. If they go out and they bring in, hell, they could bring in LeBron James right. or Paul George, another guy who that's the name that's splashy. You know, like way, yeah. I think if you you see a move like that from a team like the Sixers, their odds are going to drop a little bit, and there might be that sort of you know the, the the other side of that coin is that the Celtics odds will you know be indirectly impacted by that or directly impacted. So like I don't think it's going to change a ton. Like maybe you get the Celtics at four to one versus three to one, but yeah. still, I mean it's it's still a little extra value for you to wait. Whereas right now, fresh off the title, not sure you're getting them in a at a good price point here. Making a bet before August is just a fool's game. Yeah, because the numbers jump so much. The recency bias is very real. Right the the other way to maybe play it is that you know you're it, you're you take the Celtics at three to one or whatever they end up settling on uh, before the regular season and then piling that with something else. Right. Um, this is a similar conversation that me and Mike had last week. I think it was. I don't know. They all blend together at this point, but I think it was last week um, about Scotty Scheffler and him going into all these PGA tournaments is like the overwhelming favorite. Um, I think he was a about three to one or plus three fifty going in the U.S. Open, and then obviously barely makes the cut right. naturally. Um, but we we were kicking around like, okay, if you do like Scheffler, maybe you you pair that with something else. I did see, I did see a tweet earlier that somebody uh, somebody had the Celtics to win this past championship and pilot it with a Cole Komet anytime touchdown versus the Washington Commanders <laughs> back in October. <laughs> right. So I'm not sure I'd want to tie up uh, all of my money on a, a right. futures bet like that. But, hey, those are the options you have when you're in the, the betting game. I kind of like the idea, because <laughs> me and Mike have actually had this conversation too, where we hate futures bets because it sits in your slip. 
and you you look yeah. at your open bets and you're like, I made this bet four months ago, and then most of the time you know it's not going to hit. Oh yeah, like especially like individual awards and stuff. Yeah. Like I got a few. Uh, My Jason Tatum MVP thing was staring me in the face for months, and I did not enjoy it. it yeah, wasn't fun. The the worst is like when you've you you zero in on like an individual award. The player's having a really strong year, yep. and so you're like, I had a good read on that, but he's not quite at the the point where you can turn that into a profit. Like, right. I'm kind of there with, like, a I get an AL Cy Young ticket on Carlos Rodon. Okay. And he's having a pretty good year, but he's not quite in Cy Young territory. And like I, say, and I stare at that in my account yeah. every so often. It's and brutal. I'm like, so at least if what you, do I do with this? If you throw the, the Cole Komet touchdown on there, and then he doesn't <laughs> score, it's like, ah, whatever. You know, it's out. Yep. And then he scores and then you sit there. That's I think that's brutal. But um I, I don't hate that idea. And I do think <laughs> while we're on the topic of the NBA, with M V P odds, I personally feel I have a much better read on that than the finals because anything can happen team wise. Obviously free agency sure. hasn't even opened up yet. But individual players with the way that particular award is voted on, it's a popularity contest. Yep. And sometimes it goes the opposite way where they've given it to somebody so many times that they're like, we're not giving it to... It, it might not matter what Jokic does this year. It, he's going to need to break records to get a fourth MVP in five years. It's just not the way they operate. Well, so he is the favorite right now. Yeah. Uh, plus 340 at FanDuel Sportsbook, uh, followed it by Luka Doncic at plus 380. Um, Giannis sitting there at plus 550. Um Anybody stand out to you from from that standpoint? Just either up top or even looking down the board, if you want to get a little little frisky. I think you can move down because I I wrote down Jason here. Jason Tatum at uh, nineteen to one. By yeah, the way, don't, I've you I've been burned. Fell into that trap, <laughs> I've been trash, burned by yeah. the Jason Tatum MVP ticket. Uh, I don't think Jokic, Embiid, or Giannis. I don't think they're itching to give those guys another MVP. They've made up the last what's it six, those three players. So. I really like Anthony Edwards at DraftKings is twelve to one. I think you're just falling right back. I think no, you're falling into the Tatum trap, but just with a different guy. But this is, I look at the list. <laughs> Doncic is like he's the favorite to me. That's the guy okay. who I think is going to win the MVP. And like I did earlier with the throwing it on multiple things, just trying to make a little bit of money. It's dumb, but <laughs> yes. if you do it, it with, you acknowledge. That. Yeah, I'm going to acknowledge <laughs> when I'm being an idiot. But with Doncic plus three seventy. And then you pick another guy just to back yourself a little bit, may, maybe get better money, better value than the Doncic pick. Doncic and Anthony Edwards. Doncic 370 at DraftKings. Anthony Edwards 12 to one at DraftKings. I think if I had to bet right now, it's one of those two guys. So why not throw money on both and make a little a few a few dollars? Just to add a little Celtics context, like I said, yeah. Jason Tatum 19 to one. Uh, if you want to go way way down the board, you got Jalen Brown at 140 to one. Um, not a bet I would advise you to make, but nevertheless, it is there from a Celtic standpoint. I mean, he's winning MVP awards all over the place. So. Uh, it's true. Yeah, he's on a run here. Uh, that's the and that would be the next one, right? right. So the they don't have left. first half MVP. So yeah, you might as well take a stab at it. Um, yes, yeah, I I wouldn't mind leaning to, towards somebody like Giannis or Embiid. It, it yeah. just sort of them coming back, staying healthy, and reminding you just how good they are. Like yeah. I I think that there's a like Giannis to me it it plus five fifty and who knows that number could fluctuate a little bit like that. Yeah, I might take a take a whack at that. Um as far as like I think you know, once you get past that top portion of the board, it's it's really tough to identify yeah. somebody like really you're going to see somebody come out of nowhere and win NBA yep. MVP.